love that classic anamorphic look, but if you've ever used anamorphic lenses, then you probably know they're expensive and can be pretty bulky and heavy, and generally are not lenses you can always easily get out and about and shoot with as a solo operator. Recently, Blazer, formerly known as Great Joy, gave me their Nero 1.5 anamorphic adapter to test out. And I have to say, I'm really loving it. I think they've hit a fantastic sweet spot between anamorphic image quality, affordability, and ease of use. It's releasing soon with early bird pricing and in the UK will retail at around 900 pounds, which I honestly think is a steal for what you're getting. The Nero screws onto the front of your lens, also known as the taking lens, and essentially converts it into a 1.5 times anamorphic lens, complete with beautiful uh, elliptical bokeh and blue flaring. I've mostly been shooting with it on my Komodo uh, and I've experimented with it uh, shooting both with and without a focal reducer and I've also been shooting with it on a Lumix S1 in open gate. It works great on both full frame and super 35 sensors. Depending on which you use will depend uh, just how wide you can go on your taking lens. So on full frame sensor you can go up to about 40 millimeters and on super 35 down to about uh, 28 millimeters. I think one of the best things that comes with using an anamorphic adapter like this is that you can have a lot of fun experimenting and tailoring your look for the types of taking lenses that you use. And for me, this is where a lot of the you know sense of play and joy came in when I was using this little thing. This will help people get some really unique looks over using sort of off the shelf anamorphic lenses. So want something a bit more funky and grungy, then use a vintage lens. Or if you want something a bit cleaner and controlled, then go ahead and use a modern lens. Here we have a standard 16x9 image uh, using a 35mm spherical lens. I think it's the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4. And now we see the image coming from the same lens, but with the Nero anamorphic adapter screwed on. It gives you this nice dramatic increased field of view. I shot this on my Komodo in an anamorphic mode and then uh, de-squeezed it in post. So that's how you're going to get all that lovely sort of anamorphic characteristics. So all of this comes from an adapter that weighs just under 400 grams. Uh, so it's lighter than a lot of anamorphic adapters out there. And because of this, you don't really need to faff around with mounting uh, it onto lens support or you don't need rails, which means you can have a really quick and efficient minimal setup when you're out filming with it. So that's what I loved about it. I could just chuck it on the front when I was using a DSLR, like the Lumix S1 or even on my Komodo. And it was just really quick to get out and, and start shooting with it and also swap different lenses in and out. You basically screw it onto the front of your lens, known as your taking lens. You set the taking lens's uh, focus to infinity, then you align the adapter and then focus away using the Nero. One of the important things about these adapters is you just make sure that they're aligned properly once you've got them on. Thankfully, this adapter comes with a really handy little push button that just helps you rotate the body. I found it was really useful to shine a phone torch down the lens and basically just sort of aligning the horizontal flares. But as I use it more and more, I got really good at just sort of quickly eyeballing it and just looking at straight lines in the shots and using those to align the adapter. The rear thread on this thing is 52 millimeters, so uh, you can use step up or step down rings to fit it on different sized lenses. One of the criticisms that I think could be leveled at this adapter is that with such a small filter thread, it will limit the types and range of taking lenses that you can use. But obviously, you know, it's a trade-off. The larger this thing is, the larger that lens diameter, the larger the adapter needs to be, the heavier it is, and over a certain amount of weight, then you will start needing uh, to use rails and support and that sort of stuff. And obviously most of your vintage lenses are going to have smaller lens diameters and are going to work just fine with this. So I tested the Nero with a range of different lenses. I used an early pre-production version with a focal reducer and I used my old Helios 44-2 58mm lens which to be honest is probably my favorite combination when using this adapter. The Helios already has some pretty dreamy, swirly qualities for a spherical lens, uh, but combining with the adapter just kind of like supercharged it. 
if you are using a focal reducer, uh, they are known to sort of amplify stuff like chromatic aberration. So if you are using quite an old vintage lens, bear in mind that that could introduce or sort of boost any chromatic aberration that that lens has. So if you do want a cleaner image, then maybe look at using more modern lenses to combat that. You know, it's, the Helios is an older lens. It is a bit more sort of fuzzy around the edges. So it's a bit more prone to those sort of characteristics. I also borrowed some of these tiny little TT Artisan lenses. Uh, I never shot with those before. Uh, they're very sharp, modern looking lenses. And I found that the images I could get with these were really beautiful and clean and sharp and really sort of neutral. I used the 35mm on my Komodo and the 50mm on the Lumix S1. And I think these would make a really nice, lightweight and affordable pairing if you want to get something that's a bit clean and a bit more neutral with the Nero adapter. The Lumix S primes, I think, also would make a nice match, such as the 50mm and 85mm. You'd obviously just have to lock the focus uh, digitally in the camera rather than physically on the lens because they focus electronically. Now this sort of anamorphic adapter isn't particularly new, perhaps the best known uh, and much loved adapter out there is the Aviascope or Avascope. And this is probably what the Nero is going to be most compared to, as they also produce a 1.5 times adapter. Unlike the Aviascope, this doesn't come in an amber flare version, it's only blue flare. I think compared with the Nero, the Aviascope has a bit of an edge on the optics. The Aviascope was also much more fiddly to use and mount, it required rails and support, it was heavier. The Nero doesn't need that, it has a much more streamlined user experience and I think alongside its price will make it much more accessible for people wanting to experiment with anamorphic shooting. And I think for me this is what the Nero is doing right. point I really want to stress here is that this isn't a tool for using on big budget client projects so I think reviewing it as one of these is probably missing the point. If I'm working on a large professional job where we're shooting anamorphic then I'm probably going to have budget to rent and shoot on proper anamorphic lenses and obviously you're always going to have a better experience shooting on those. This isn't designed to be a replacement for that. But if I did have a smaller job, perhaps working creatively with an artist or charity, and I wanted that anamorphic look on a budget, then yes, I totally consider shooting on something like this for a professional job. If I also wanted to create something that was very unique looking that I couldn't get from an off the shelf anamorphic lens, then again, this is a really playful offering, uh, allowing you to produce all kinds of images tailored to your particular style. And I just kind of love that sense of play and experimentation it introduced uh, when I went out testing with all the different lenses I have. Of course, you've always got to remember that adding another lens into your setup will affect your final image. But in my testing, you know, this was controlled enough to be used on smaller professional jobs and definitely for YouTube content. Obviously, everyone's tolerances for lens characteristics and flaws are going to be different. So do review footage coming out of this adapter from other YouTubers. You know, check it is something that would work within your own workflow. For me and the work I produce, I really cherish the ability to quickly use this adapter and create interesting anamorphic images on the fly. It was fantastic. And I think at this price point, it's gonna allow a lot of people to dip their toe into anamorphic shooting without having to invest in an expensive set of anamorphic lenses or you know, have extensive technical experience uh, that can sometimes be required when shooting on a more DIY anamorphic setup. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think about this. Um, what anamorphic adapters are people currently using? Uh, are there any Aviascope users out there who would be tempted to move over to this adapter? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video and obviously subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this. I've been Ed Prosser and until next time, see ya!